summit. And you can bet issues like Afghanistan are going to come up as well. Uh, it is not expected that anybody is going to lay out their cards here on camera. Uh, it will probably be more of a greeting and an acknowledgement of the number of challenges that these leaders face. Conspicuous in his absence at that table right now is no doubt Vladimir Putin, the Russian president. Uh, he sent uh, former President Medvedev in his stead. Medvedev, of course, had a, a, a very good dialogue as the Obama administration sought to, quote, reset that relationship between Russia and the United States. Vladimir Putin not wanting to make any unilateral concessions. Here we go. Let's listen to the speakers. Welcome all the leaders here. Uh, the press, you're welcome as long as you don't break anything. Um, this is, by the way, the largest gathering uh, ever of uh, international leaders at Camp David, uh, and I'm glad that we could arrange for good weather. Uh, last night, we had a chance to discuss uh, some core issues that affect uh, our common security. Uh, and I want to say that uh, we are unified when it comes to our approach with Iran. Uh, I think all of us agree that uh, Iran has the right to peaceful nuclear power, but that its continuing violations of international rules and norms uh, and its uh, inability thus far to convince the world community that it's not pursuing uh, the weaponization of nuclear uh, power is something uh, of grave concern to all of us. Uh, we are hopeful about the uh, discussions that will be taking in Baghdad, uh, but uh, all of us are firmly committed to uh, continuing with the uh, approach of uh, sanctions and pressure in combination with diplomatic uh, discussions. Uh, and our hope is, is that we can resolve this issue uh, in a peaceful fashion uh, that respects Iran's sovereignty uh, and its rights uh, in the international community, but also recognizes its responsibilities. We had a discussion about Syria, and uh, we all believe that uh, a peaceful resolution and political transition in Syria is preferable. Uh, we are all deeply concerned about the violence that's taking place there and the loss of uh, life. We are supportive of the Anam pl uh, plan, but we agreed, uh, and I expect this will be reflected in our communique, that uh, the Anam plan has to be fully implemented uh, and that a political process has to move forward uh, in a uh, more timely fashion to resolve that issue. Uh, we also had a chance to discuss the situation in North Korea. Uh, all of us agree that uh, North Korea is violating its international obligations, uh, and that uh, there is a path for them uh, to, uh, to rejoin the international community, uh, but that path is not going to be, uh, uh, or, or that objective will not be achieved uh, if they continue with the provocative actions uh, that they have shown uh, over the last several months. Uh, and uh, on a brighter note, we had the opportunity to discuss Burma. And uh, all of us are hopeful uh, that the political process and transition, transformation that is beginning to take place there uh, takes root. Uh, many of us have taken actions uh, to uh, open up trade and investment with uh, Burma for the first time in many years. Uh, and uh, we uh, have had discussions uh, with uh, the leadership there. Our hope is, is that this process will continue, and we're going to do everything that we can uh, to uh, encourage that process. Uh, finally, we had a, a brief discussion around uh, the issue of women's empowerment, uh, where we agreed that uh, both when it comes to economic development uh, and when it comes to peace and security issues, uh, empowering women to have a seat at the table and get more engaged and more involved uh, in these processes can be extraordinarily fruitful, and this is something that we will uh, also be introducing during the G20. So. I want to thank all the leaders, uh, despite the fact that uh, at least those coming from across the Atlantic uh, ended up staying up, I guess, till 6 in the morning their time. Uh, the discussions were very uh, fruitful. This morning we're going to be spending a lot of time on uh, economic issues. Uh, obviously, uh, the Eurozone will be one topic. Uh, 
and uh, all of us uh, are absolutely committed uh, to making sure that uh, both growth and stability uh, and fiscal consolidation are part of a overall package that all of us have to pursue uh, in order to achieve the kind of uh, uh, prosperity for our citizens that we're looking for. We'll also be talking about uh, uncertainty in the energy markets and how we can uh, help to uh, resolve some of those issues. And we'll be spending some time uh, talking about development, the Middle East, North Africa, uh, and uh, our capacity to sustain economic development in Afghanistan. Obviously, in Chicago, during the NATO meeting, we'll spend more time talking about security, on, uh, security matters. But here, we want to make sure that we recognize the need for Afghanistan to be able to sustain a development agenda uh, moving forward as we begin to transition uh, out of war. So uh, again, I want to thank all the leaders for being here. Uh, so far, this has been a, a frank and useful conversation, uh, and it gives me great optimism about our ability to meet these challenges in the future. All right? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. And the press being invited to leave there after some a warm greeting from President Barack Obama to all the leaders, noting this is the most world leaders who have ever assembled there at the Camp David presidential mm. uh, retreat in Maryland. But he outlined a few of the problems that they faced. He said, we're unified in our approach to Iran, trying to prevent Iran from turning its nuclear enrichment program in the direction of atomic bombs. He said, our hope is that we can resolve that fashion. He talked about Syria. He talked about the positive uh, notes on Burma, saying that they were encouraged mm -hmm. by what was happening, and many countries were beginning to uh, uh, invest.